So I kind of begin with a simple thesis. I think Linux is the only operating system for the future. And that's a very strong statement because I said the only. Only in an enterprise server sense. Of course, we all use iOS and Android and all our devices. And by the way, I think every device will have their own, including cards and set-top boxes and televisions, etc. But on the, on the server side, it's Linux. You then begin with, how do you begin to scale with the millions and billions of servers? So Kubernetes and containers gives us an architecture that allows us to take cost and complexity out, but get the resilience we want there. None of us like getting locked in to any particular supplier or vendor. So Linux and containers based on open source is also an open architecture that allows us to move forward. It also, because their sovereignty is important, no nation wants to be dependent upon others only. So allowing it to work both within a nation, in a private data center as a bank might want, are important elements. Red Hat links all that credibility through its products and its technologies. Strong belief in upstream open source, strong belief in remaining open, committed to that journey, and with Red Hat Linux and with OpenShift, a really strong platform to help start the journey that I was describing for hybrid cloud across all the environments that we all care about so deeply. So with that, uh, managing to grow that by five times over the last two years, uh, growing the uh, deployment of both Linux and OpenShift. I think that's a great start to our open hybrid cloud platform journey. Look, let's agree. There are a lot of social media platforms, technology companies that have become very big, very visible and very important to the economy and to all of us as consumers. That said, they do not necessarily service I'll call it the deep needs of enterprises. How do you do retail banking? How do you make sure your ATMs work in the middle of the night? How do you make sure your railways run safely? How do you make sure you can trust the technology in an open and transparent way? So when I say all that, where I'm going is, and the reason I dislike the word transformation, I think change is a constant. Change for individuals, we all have to learn and grow as individuals. I'm different than I was 30 years ago. I'm going to guess you're a little bit different than the young IT director of 1971 who ran the IT operations, not the business at Publicis. Um, organizations have to grow because the world changes, and I'll come to that in 10 seconds. And nations have to change because what brought us competitive advantage 250 years ago, not so random a time, is not the same as today. So when I look upon information technology, you're right. You mentioned IBM's history. The first thing we could mention was the Hollerith machine, otherwise known as the punch card reader. It led to great success through World War II. Then came the era of semiconductors and transistors, and the first, I'd say, they, it culminated in the IBM mainframe. We then went to internet, and internet and client server are together. Then comes cloud. Like all these pendulums, you begin with something centralized and then it gets distributed. So in a world of public cloud or in a world of multiple public clouds, but some things are still going to stay in your own data centers, there is a great need for somebody who can help across those different platforms. So we embraced open and we leveraging the Red Hat technology are building a hybrid cloud platform that can help our enterprises and governments go forward in a way that they control their destiny, not only dependent upon somebody else. I think that's a trillion dollar market. And so capturing that and leading in that is the slow change I'll say we are making, because by the time we get through it, it'll be time for the next change. So I always begin with change is constant, but if you bring value to our clients in a way that they like, then that allows us to thrive and allows them to thrive. IBM is closed, IBM is proprietary, IBM likes to do its works behind closed doors, Red Hat is open, Red Hat is the opposite of proprietary, hey, you will. Red Hat likes to do its work <laughs> in the open, is how you characterize it. But then I go back and maybe mention some reality points. In 1999, IBM was the first company that endorsed Linux and open source. We actually put more money into Linux than Red Hat did. So I would say that we can take a little bit of credit, not, not the biggest, just a little bit of credit. 
in making it successful. So we have a 20, 22 year history now in having a real belief in open source and how that should go forward. People also forget that some of the bases of open source like uh, relational databases and so on did come out of IBM. So when the engineers get together, the great pride I have is that you cannot tell who is who. And actually both sides acknowledge that, not just IBM and not just Red Hat. When product plans are being made, you cannot tell which is which. That said, it is really important to preserve the openness from a market perspective, not just the technology of Red Hat. So we remain clear that the go-to-market will remain side by side, not completely integrated. So every partner who works with Red Hat knows that Red Hat advantages them as much or as little as IBM. It does not advantage IBM more. IBM can be opinionated and that's how it works. But the proof for a businessman like yourself and like a lot of your audience lies in what we can return. Red Hat was a little over 3 billion when we announced the acquisition. It'll be over 5 billion this year in revenue. I think that speaks for itself in terms of how the integration is going from the perspective of clients and the world. The second thing I'll take pride in is, despite the incredible war for talent, we have lower attrition today than we had uh, two and a half years ago. I think that speaks to the attractiveness for employees. I don't take that easily. It is something we have to keep working on to keep employees energized and to keep the success going in the real world. All things have the time and place. 20 years ago, it made sense to have managed infrastructure services within IBM. We can claim some credit to maybe even growing and establishing that market. So you now say, well, so then why are you spinning it out today? The reason you spin it out is that as you observe, 25 years ago, clients made these decisions together. They decided on their infrastructure and they decided on their applications and where they run it together. Today, they're making a decision of using a public cloud, perhaps. They're using a decision of using Linux inside. They make a decision on an application. That is completely distinct from how they choose to uh, consume infrastructure services. So if the buying decision separates that much, then it's better for the companies to be separate because then focus allows each one to optimize its business model. So then you get back to capital allocation. For us, the future is in hybrid cloud platforms and in artificial intelligence. So we are going to put all our capital allocation as the remaining IBM behind those. You see the proof of that. We have done 11 acquisitions in the past 12 months all around those two themes. That's allowing us, you're seeing the early returns of that in our return to growth in the first quarter of this year. So those are all examples where the focus really helps. It re-energizes our uh, message to our clients, it re-energizes our people, and it re-energizes growth. But then Kindro, the spin out, can then focus on what it does, and with a very different business model, it allows them to optimize what they do. I always believe focus brings incredible clarity and it allows us to then return greater value to our clients and to the market.